Hi there. As you can see, I've brought one of the new patients upstairs. I've got it in my stand. Um, I will be fixing this one up. But I thought I'll uh, give you a quick look over it in its current state. And as you can see, there's a lot of cobwebs, dead leaves, rust. I don't even know. Well, that free will does work. It's, I'm not sure if that's the chain making it stiff. I think that is because it is pre. Yeah. That chain I'll cut off and put another one on. Apart from that, there's a lot of potential with this one. Probably not worth doing unless you've got parts kicking around like I have. You know, for example, I have spare stems and handlebars that are in better condition than that, that I can whack on there easy enough. But I don't think it'd be worth going out and buying a new handlebar and stem. Not if you're going to sell the bike on, which I likely will do in the future. No cobwebs. It's definitely been stood outside for a while. And if it hasn't been outside, it's definitely been stood in a garage, or perhaps a shed. Ooh. I hope I don't find any spiders. I don't like spiders. There's that front light. No rear light, but that doesn't matter. I do have another rear light that'll mat that matches it in the um, box of lights that I mentioned in my previous video. That rear brake cable looks like that can still be used. And the way I do things, if it can still be used, was is still usable, it will be used again. And the rear brake still operates fine, and that cable still looks fine, so that will get taken off and reused. I'll just cut the cable here, pull the cable out. I do have better brake, better brake noodles downstairs in my tub of bits. The gear shifters and brake levers I'll leave as they are. They'll clean up well enough. <clears throat> I think with a good clean and a polish, that frame will come up nice enough. Some of the stickers are peeling. Uh, crack in the seat. I may keep this one for a little while as it can be my uh, guinea pig, so to speak. As I have a few, have a bunch of videos I'd like to do, and that involves how to do something, so it'll definitely be my guinea pig for a while, at least. But for now, I just want to get this into a clean, usable condition. These rockets are a bit eh. I don't know. I may change the free wheel. I don't know. I'll decide that when I get the wheel out. Tires, I'm not sure if I'll reuse because they are a bit bent out of shape where they've been sitting on flat tires for so long. So, I'll pump them up and see if they regain their shape, but if they don't, then they'll have to go. Anyway, this will be a... Uh, another bike you can join me on the journey of repairing most people would have would have likely have taken this down to the dump but I'm not most people and I see potential most people would probably see scrap that all feels nice and loose it's not seized up yeah that chains crap that definitely go yeah, there's grass growing in the wheel. Grass in the drailer as well. Yeah, the gear cables are definitely rusty. They'll go. I'll replace those. I might have some in my used cable box. That is something you will learn about me. I reuse a lot of second-hand parts to save money, which is one reason I don't bother putting a new chain on if I change the free wheel because the free wheels are usually 
I nearly always actually used three wheels that I've taken off of buckled wheels. So I don't see any point in putting a new chain on something that's already old. So I'll just reuse a, another old chain that still has life in it. And it is actually a uh, pretty good way to save money if you've got an extremely tight budget. And I have a tight budget. In fact, the Claude Butler project I'm working on is probably the first bike that I've spent so much on on new parts. Uh, those handlebar grips are okay, they can be reused. So I'll be taking them off in the safe way. Uh, cranks are actually in good condition. See, these are the uh, plastic coated ones. So you wouldn't want to bash these off with a hammer, as I mentioned in the previous video. Because you'll uh, crack the plastic. Been there, done that, got the t shirt. <laughs> Okay, pedal spins fine. Pedal spins fine. That is the tar, not the wheel. So you can see what I mean by the tar being bent out of shape. But I can assure you that is just the tar. Yep. Can I get the back one to freewheel? Yep. I can. Again, that is just the tar wobbling, not the wheel. Because while you're watching the tar, I'm watching the wheel room. I don't know, that free wheel's got a good click to it. I may be able to reuse it. That might be alright with a wire brushed down and some fresh oil on it. Spokes aren't rusty, so that tells me they are likely to be stainless steel spokes. Yeah, because even on the front one, that front hub's got some rust on it, but the spokes haven't. I doubt they're alloy aluminium spokes. No, they're not. I can see a little patch of rust there. That's weird, because I can't find any on the back spokes. Plenty of cobwebs. But no rust. And that would be really, really odd that they would put stainless in the back wheel and not the front. Unless someone has changed the back wheel in the past. And replaced it. That would explain it. Although they've both got exactly the same style of wheels. Um, wheel spoke reflectors. Wheel spoke reflectors. You know what I mean. Spoke reflectors. So, hmm. It's a bit odd. Spokes aren't for tea, they're still usable. Oh, they might actually be alloy spokes from the way they've gone. I'll have to get my magnet out and check them. But despite all that cobweb on there, it still works. It still works fine. The, um need some adjustment on there, because as you can see, one side... Well, if I hold the camera in the right place, you can see. One side is... Uh, bringing a lot better than the other. It shouldn't be just a case of adjusting these uh, screws, but I'll get into that later on with the bike. The first thing I'm going to do is strip all the crappy parts off. I think some of these outer cases can be reused. I'll reuse them if the cables aren't seized, frozen inside, and if there's no splits. The gear ones I'll change, because these are the smaller ones. They've got the smaller diameter to the brake cables. Which tells me those gear cables are most likely original. Because I use brake air casing on the gear casing, on the gear cables rather. And I've seen several people on YouTube do the same thing. I just find that the uh, gear cables are less likely to freeze up inside them. 
can help if you put a little bit of oil down the casing or a bit of grease on the cable as some people do. I never do and I've never had a problem with the cable seizing up. They usually only seize if you uh, leave the bike outside for a while in all weathers and the water gets down there and rust up the cable and they get frozen inside the uh, casing. Well, that's good. A little bit of rubber on here isn't perished. Usually they perish. Maybe this hasn't sat outside for as long as I think. Or at least not as long as the Muddy Fox. The Muddy Fox is a bit rustier. So what I will be doing is stripping everything off. All the cables. All the outer casings. I'll probably remove the brakes, just to clean them up and get all them cobwebs off. I'll have to change the uh, rim tape. Again, that does... I am a really poor cameraman. Let's put that in view, shall we? That would help. See this rim tape hanging out of there. Which is a good indication that's been wheeled around on flat tyres as well. So I'm definitely not going to pump that tyre up yet. So that's a job to do. Take the tyre apart. Put a new rim tape on. I do have a pile of spare rim tape somewhere. If not, I will demonstrate a, a um, cheat, as I like to call it. An alternative to using proper rim tape, which has always worked for me. <coughs> I'm going to tell you what it is, that'll wait till the next video, which I'll do a bit later after this one, because uh, I'm getting hungry, I just want to show you the bike before it gets taken apart. One thing I'm going to hope is that the seat post isn't frozen in, because they can be a pain in the ass to get off. A lot of the time I don't bother, if they don't come loose I scrap the frame because they're not really worth the time and effort to free up. You could free it up if you heat up the seat tube, but then you'll ruin all the paint and you'll have to repaint it. And on a, what I call a budget bike, you know, this probably cost no more than a hundred quid when it was new, probably less than that actually, um, it wouldn't be worth the hassle. Uh, yeah, I'm just checking the forks. They're in line as they should be. Always check this bit here. They've got to be in pretty much a straight line. If they're bent back like that, and that's how the front end prang. And some people write the bikes off when that's happened, but if I've got a spare pair of forks lying about, I'll just change the forks. Just the usual, usual paint beans on the forks. They always seem to get at the worst of forks, the front forks. I suppose it's because of their posi uh, position and bikes fall over and hit the wall and they're the first bits that hit the wall. So anyway, that's the first look over of the bike. I may actually keep it even when I've done using it as a guinea pig because I've got a good set of uh, cycling bags downstairs that Biggles give me but I haven't got a suitable bike to put them on well I think I've just found a suitable bike to put them on I don't want to put them on my Claude Butler because I don't want to use it for that sort of thing it wants to be, my, I want it to be my leisure bike I suppose would be the best description <clears throat> you know, one that I could go for a long bike ride on. Uh, anyway, 15 minutes. I'm going to end the video here. As usual, if you liked the video, hit the like button. If you disliked it, hit the dislike button. If you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments below. And I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Uh, this evening, I'm going to start dismantling this bike
Well, I'm going to start taking all the uh, crap off I'm not going to use. So I've got the camera on the tripod. I'm going to sit you somewhere, hopefully you'll be able to see. And uh, I'm going to start cracking on. There. Can't actually see my screen. You can see my elbow. I think that's about as good as I'm going to get you. <coughs> I may sound a bit quiet as I'm going to be away from the camera. But uh, let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is cut the old gear cables. Oh, by the way, I found the wire cards I got from Middles. I've got two pairs of these and another pair downstairs. These are brand new, never been used. They have now. I'll just cut through the old gear cables. As I won't be using them, I'll be using the brand new ones. Or probably just some out of my uh, spare cable box. I'm going to cut the ends off the brake cables. Instead, just going to cut. Let's try again. It's off now, it's just shot across the lounge. Do the same on the front. That's on the sofa somewhere. So, yep, I think we're ready to remove the cables. Don't think my cutters anymore. We can't get on there. The only reason I've got two is because I bought them that on a special offer from Wills. I had the first pair on the land two years at least, and Wills had another batch of their tools in because they rotate their household stuff and DIY stuff once a week, I think once or twice a week and uh, they had some more tools in they had an half a week to buy two for um I'm oh, sorry let's, let's buy three for the price of two so I got that a big pair of grips that I showed in my tool video and a pair of uh, I think they're like nail pullers like nails from wood sort of thing just make sure the cable's in the right So, yeah, that's why I bought, I've got two of the same pair of cuts. They are good. The last two years, I've been used to cut cables and out of casings. I think they've done pretty well. I think the bar alone, they were something like 3 99 2 99 something like that. Right, so there's another cable. There's two of those. I'm ready for the bin. Various derailleurs in my outside closet, so 
single stroke for some reason. memory card got full because silly me forgot I already had some previous videos waiting on the memory card to be transferred to the computer so now that I've emptied the video card memory card sorry I uh, have plenty of room uh, you didn't miss anything it literally cut off shortly after I'd finished cutting the chain off and the only thing I did after that was take the little end of cable off the dryer so uh, you haven't missed anything uh, I don't have a lot of battery left from the looks of it so uh, I don't know what else I'll do to this as it is getting quite late it is nearly 9.30 in the evening as you can see the brake pads are okay there's plenty of plenty of meat left on them front and back so I'll reuse those I may you know they're springing alright so I'll probably leave those on but, uh, I'll probably change these bolts for some clean ones I have plenty of clean ones kicking about I've got a little uh, tub downstairs that I keep a lot all my uh, brake lever cable adjusters and there's all sorts in there my brake noodles all these sorts of bolts I keep in there so I, all know, so I know where they are uh, so uh, when I bring that upstairs and do the brakes, you'll see that. Yeah, I don't think I don't think there's actually much more I can do to this. Not unless we see if the uh, seat post is going to budge. Although my battery is looking really bad at the minute. So uh, this bit of video, I think I'll uh, end. And I'll splice it together with the other segment and uh, upload it. You'll probably see this a day or two after I uh, film it. So I do have quite a queue of videos at the minute to go up. Uh, I don't know. Let's put you down real quickly, see if the uh, seat post is going to budge.
Here we go, you can free the bolt off. Right. It may require a little bit of WD-40. And for some reason there's two washers on there, I'm not sure why they're on there. I don't even think they... No, that is the correct bolt for that. I don't know why there's two washers on it. Yeah. <laughs> All them cobwebs. I'll probably find something living up there later. Uh, I think to get the seat post out, I may have to uh, take it out of its stand. Cause I may have to prise that apart a little bit. Unscrew that screw down, I'll move that reflector out of the way as well. Uh, I ain't got a lot of battery left on the camera, so I'm going to end the video. As usual, if you like the video, hit the like button. If you dislike it, hit the dislike button. And leave any comments and questions in the comments section below. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. I uh, decided I'd turn the camera on again this evening. I've uh, removed the seat, seat tube bolt. I can't remember where I've put it, but I have removed it. <laughs> Here it is. It's actually pretty clean apart from that nut, so I'll replace the nut on, on the end of that for a clean one. Uh, it's a bit too rusty to clean up. I've also put a fresh pair of batteries in the camera. Anywho, moving on to the bike. I'm going to try and uh, fight the seat. See if I can get that to come off. I've never seen a seat clamp put that way up before. That's new on me. If you look, the seat clamp is actually up in the seat. Usually they hang down below it. So that's a new one on me. Anyway, what you doing there? Hang you up a bit. I'm just going to check. Yep. You can see. Get a bit of a leverage tool. You may have to wait. You may need some double D40. Let's give that to the part. That might be enough to loosen it, you see. It might not.
tougher sauce. That ain't gonna move, is it? Um, should we try the forks then? We'll try the forks. Not the forks, though. Heads then. For that, let's turn the camera somewhere there, I think. These are usually a six mil hexagon key. What I'm also going to do, it's a bit tall, is uh, put the bike down. And, uh, hopefully, it's still in the shot. It is. I 
may take that off. I like these reflectors so they may go on the Claude Butler and I'll put something different on this one. Because I don't like selling bikes without the necessary reflectors. And uh, for night use, according to the highway code, you are supposed to have a rear reflector 
and amber pedal reflectors. According to the highway code, front reflectors and wheel reflectors and any other reflectors are all optional. I like them personally, so just a little extra bit of uh, visibility and helps a car driver identify you as a cyclist. And of course, they'll see the reflectors bouncing up and down as you pedal. And a good driver will think, oh, there's a cyclist there, I'll better give him some space. Not that, not that some do, they like to pass you within inches. So close that you could probably reach into their window and uh, pick something off their passenger seat. Well, that's, uh, I could perhaps rant about things like that in another video. It's a shame about that seat. I'd like to have uh, got that out. So I could either... I'll talk about one thing and have the camera pointing somewhere else. How sensible is that? <laughs> anyway, anyway, back to the seat post. I would have liked to have got that out tonight, so I could have either cleaned it up or decided to get a replacement. I do keep some spares. My uh, spares bin is a bit empty in certain areas. I don't have many seat posts, I don't have many spare handlebars. But, if I do ever need any, I know a man who has. <laughs> the only problem is, I can't get there to get him, so I'm a bit stuffed at the minute. It's not my sister's fault, it's just the cars are gotten rather old and had a rough life, and it's just decided enough is enough, I think. I think it's ready for the scrapyard and the sky, personally. It's not worth spending the money on fixing. Scrap the bloody thing save up some money and she should get something a bit better. I'm actually surprised that the dragons haven't rusted actually. They usually do, especially when they've been uh, left out, especially the front ones. I find on um, the less expensive bikes like this one that the front dragons do tend to rust quite well. Oh my word, I've gone on for 16 minutes in this video. I've really been stood here that long? I really do ramble. Anyway. Yeah, the drivers are fine. Just for the buck. Springs are fine on that one, so... That's okay. Sometimes I have found that gears will not change properly if you've got a weak spring. If it's too weak, it won't shift properly. The number of gear issues I've fixed just by changing the rear derailleur, because the springs have got too weak. So, if you find you can't set your gears up properly, or they won't stay set up, then that's probably the problem. Change that, and a derailleur like that would be probably cheap as chips. It's nothing really special, it's just a bog standard. Failure. I think the only reason I want to keep this bike in there is because it's black, and black is my favourite colour. And I actually prefer a complete rigid frame like this to ride off-road. I'm not going to wreck my Claude Butler like that and bounce it off road. That's going to purely be for road use. But something like this I could easily put together and uh, go bouncing around off road when the weather's better. We haven't had snow around this area. Well, we had a sprinkle, literally, quite just a dusting. Unlike areas like Canada and America, who have uh, had quite a lot this year, we've had virtually none. Well, not in my part of the UK, anyway. We uh, had the dusting, like I said, and that was it. We get more rain than anything else. Because I'm in uh, Norfolk, in England, in the uh, big bump that sticks out on the side, on the east side of England, 
most bad weather tends to uh, fizzle out before it gets to us. So we usually just get the weaker tail end of storms and whatnot. Unless of course the storm is blowing straight down the east coast, which it has done in the past. And we had the uh, tidal surge over a year ago now. That really did do some damage on the east coast. You won't rambling about the weather now. So uh, I think I better end the video before I ramble any more. So, uh, as usual, if you like my video, like it. If you dislike it, hit the dislike button. Uh, any comments and questions in the comment section below. And uh, I'll talk to you again later. Uh, hi. I'm going to make this video now, otherwise I'll forget about it by morning. So, uh, next time you see me talk about this bike, it'll be daylight. Which I'll add in after I'm done talking about this segment and my devised plan to get this seat post out. What I'm going to do... <laughs> I'm going to uh, first try a different seat bolted to the top here, one that might grip the post better without spinning on it. And I'll leave this to soak in WD-40 for about an hour, and I'll try and see if the uh, seat post will release that way. If it doesn't, I'll resort to plan B, which is drill a hole straight through, so it goes all the way through and use this bar as a lever. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to put the uh, proverbial square peg through a round hole. So my plan is to put that, drill a hole through that, put this through and then use this bar to try and free off the seat post. It will ruin the seat post but I do have spares so that doesn't matter. And that is actually rather pitted and rusted anyway, so I don't mind wasting a uh, seat post to try and get it out. And the best thing with this bar is I can um, put a handlebar or something on the end. Yes, it's got a spanner welded to that end. I'm not sure why. This was... Uh, I can't remember where I got this from. I think that's when one of my uh, friends had a clean out in their workshop. That's not something they did, it's just something they obtained along the lines, and... It's a 13 mil spanner. It must have been put on there to give them more le um, leverage. The welding is crap, look at that. That big blob right on the end there. Uh. I don't matter, because I'm not going to use a spanner anyway. I just want the bar, because it's a solid bar. See, it's not, not hollow, solid. So that's my plan for tomorrow. So the next part of this video, you will see it will be daylight, da daylight, daylight, and probably of me fighting with this seat post again. So I'm determined I'm going to win. It's putting up a fight, but I will win. Oh, while I'm at it, I did find this uh, handlebar stem up here. But I'm not sure I like the chrome one in that frame. I've got black ones and various others in a box out in the shop, so uh, I'll bring a few up when I'm done outside tomorrow. Because uh, um, I've got to go outside and break that old Triumph Ladies bike up, ready for the scrap heap, as I've said. So, uh, yeah. The next part of this video will be me um, in daylight continuing fighting with that seat person. And I hope I don't get the same issues with the Muddy Fox, otherwise I'll have to try the same methods. So uh, I just wanted to make this part of the video now, otherwise I would forget. And uh, once I've got that seat post out, I can crack on with everything else. I have found uh, one other job that I need to do, 
Yeah, bearings in here are a bit dry and stiff. Bearings in the headset, top and bottom. So uh, I'll loosen the nut, take the nut off at the top and loosen the cone. And uh, give them a squirt of grease. Clean them up if I have to, or even replace them if they've gotten too rusty. And basically just service the headset. Which I figured I might as well as I've got all the handlebars and stem out. It's not exactly hard to drop the forks out. Just undo the lock nut and the uh, yeah, bearing cone or cap, whatever you want to call it. It'll make life easier to clean that bottom race up as well. It's not heavy with rust, so with a bit of elbow grease and some steel wool that should come up clean enough. <coughs> so, I'll do the same with these nuts as well, bottle cage nuts. Yeah, I was going to clean the bike frame tonight before I filmed tomorrow, but there's no point cleaning it if I can't get that seat post out. If that seat post is well and truly seized in there, then this frame is scrap, I'm afraid. Well, I could use it like that, but it's not really much use, because it's stuck in one position. And if someone taller wanted to buy the bike, they can't, because they can't raise the saddle. So, I'll just scrap frames that are like that, because I don't see uh, any point in keeping them. So, yeah, I'm going to end this segment so I can uh, crack on with things. And I'll go to bed and I'll see you in the morning. Bye. Hi. I'm now ready to fit the rest of the parts to McCord Butler, which is what I'm going to do today. I'm going to start with the gear shifters. So, what I will do. Start with the kind of WD-40. I might remember where I put it. Behind the bike. The easiest way to get your handlebar grips off is to use a spray like WD-40 or something similar, or you can use water. Water works. And uh, what we do. These are open ends on these grips, so I'm going from this end. Just find a smaller flathead screwdriver. Uh, you go, flathead screwdriver around about that size should do it. And just pop that under there, like that. Then you get your spray. Spray some in under there, like that. And then, work the screwdriver around. You should be able to work the handlebar grip loose, like so. And that's how you remove the handlebar grip without um, damaging them. So, I'll do the other side. I'll get both off at the same time. WD-40. Work it around with the screwdriver. Should just pop this in there, just like that. Now, next job. The old gear shifters. So usually 5mm hexagon key on these easy bars. You'll never come across any other side. Sides. Later. Okay. Got to shift this 
stuff. This one. Pausing it because I can't remember where I put the bolt. <laughs> I kind of lost the bolt. It's probably right under my nose and I can't see it. I'm going to put it down here somewhere. Oh, put it in when it's on the bottom. Turn it right on. Slide on the handbar grip. handlebar grips in the world, but they'll do. Anything is better than holding on to a cold metal bar. Oh, okay. Match, match wherever you are. job I'm going to do is uh, take the back wheel out so I can fit three wheel. So, yep, I've got three wheel tool done here, just making sure that was out ready. So what I need, 15 more span, that should be, yeah, there's 15. Slide it onto your wheel. 
and then turn the tool. And that will go on with our cross thread. Now I'm not going to bother doing it up tight. Ooh, I may need a spacer on there. Put you back up there. I do hope uh, I've got that in shot. Right. Go ahead and put the wheel back, back on. Have a look at my nice shoulder. Now. We do need some spaces. Washers for space. First, let's get this back in. Mm -hmm. Might get away with it. Boom! Okay. I didn't have that done up tight enough, did I?
tricky. good. dragging on the base of that dryer, so I need to lower the dryer a little. And to do that, I'm going to have to undo the uh, Allen screw. Some of them are a 9mm nut, or bolt, I should say. Some are a 5mm uh, hexagon key. to be a bit of a problem. If I have the dryer down there, then the dryer won't come up above the top gear. Oh dear. Um, well, I don't use bottom gears anyway. So I could. I think that'll be alright. Keep the screwdriver again. No one, I'll undo that one. And it's somewhere there. Lines, we'll straighten that up. And I think I'm happy with it there. Yeah, look, a little friend drop again. See him? Come back a bit so he'll focus. So Come 
them out of the way. I can handle small spiders, it's the really big ones I don't like. Tighten this up. Do you believe it? It's moved. Yeah, it has. It's a bit twisted. Can you see that? Loosen this off again. Job. Set the brake cables up, we think. So, so far. Don't actually think that red rally is properly in line. Let's just give it another. I don't use the bottom gears anyway, so I'm not fussed about that rub. I think the only way I could get around it is to put a uh, smaller front crank on. Which uh, I'll probably do in the future. <laughs> 